Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Oracle Sales Summit. The role of the B2B seller has changed so rapidly in the last 18 months as digital customer engagements have blown past any previously imagined volumes. Our most successful B2B customers, a few of whom you'll hear from today, are telling us that their sales teams have embraced virtual sales at lightning speed because they've realized they need to become one with digital customer engagements. Virtual selling, it's here to stay. So we've assembled a series of experts from analysts to our leading customers who will offer you some great insights and real life experiences for succeeding in today's virtual B2B sales world. First, you'll hear from Lori Buchek, leading researcher from IDC covering CRM. She will share her latest research on B2B buyer preferences and a roadmap for transforming into a virtual selling organization. Lori will also interview one of Oracle's leading customers, Glory Global, about their ongoing path to digital transformation. We also have a powerful innovation demo ready for you. We'll show you Oracle's newest tools to support virtual sellers built with our Redwood UX. But that's not all. You'll also hear from great brands about their virtual selling transformation stories. So let's get started. Please help me give a warm welcome to Lori Buchek, Research Vice President of the CRM Advisory Practice at IDC. Thanks for being with us today, Lori. Over to you. Thanks, Katrina. IDC research is finding that it is undeniable. B2B technology buyers are now digital first. And in fact, it's not just digital first, it's digital always. We have been tracking the buying behavior of technology buyers for several years. And what we found is not only has there been an uptick over the years of more and more tech buyers saying they're going to use more e-commerce all the way through the entire buying journey instead of turning to an actual human salesperson, but there was a huge jump just year over year. Last year, 61% of B2B tech buyers said that, yes, they would use e-commerce all the way through the entire buying process. And this year it's 74% and millennials are 78%. So it is undeniable. It is a fact that we are definitely into this digital first era for buyers. What does that mean to sales? It means that there is a shrinking role for field sales. Now, with that said, humans are still vitally important. So that human connection is not going away, but there's an evolution to how and when it gets delivered. And take a look at this data, it really shows the rise of virtual sales. And this is that digitized human connection coming into play. So overall, across all the buying journey stages from the time that they're exploring to evaluating to purchasing, it is, primarily digital, 40% at the beginning of the stages, 37% uh, in the middle and 36% at the end. But look at the nuances of the virtual selling versus the self-service. Self-service by far outweighs everything else. You have 23% of buyers in exploration stage who are going to be 100% uh, self-service or primarily self-service. 17% um, though want digital interaction with sales. And then that field salesperson comes in around 13% of the time. If you look over onto the purchase phase at the very end where historically we like to make an assumption that that's where really there is the huge uptick of that direct human connection, that direct human connection is still the lowest. 17% would be actually connecting with a human salesperson. And while that's higher than the other stages, it's still lower than that digital virtual sales interaction and that digital self-service. We also take a look at, well, how is this playing out across generations? We knew that millennials were born with a mouse in their hand. So they're very naturally digital first and baby boomers have been slowly drag, dragged along into this next era. But really over the last year, that, that window has closed. We are now on parity across 
the various generations that are in the workforce. And in fact, baby boomers, according to this data, have a tendency to be a little bit more on the digital side than even some of their other counterparts. So in the exploration stage, 44% of baby boomers said they're going to use digital self-service and digital sales versus 13% would more primarily use an in-person salesperson. And then when you look over onto the purchase stage, you've got 38% of baby boomers that are primarily digital and 15% with that human sales connection. So across the board, all the generations are definitely digital first. Now, I talked about how humans are definitely not going away. They're very important. And we dug a little bit deeper into really where does that human connection matter most? And the top three reasons that we found that B2B tech buyers want to engage with the human is A, to get answers quickly. That was number one uh, with a total response of 49%, just under 50%. Um, B, to finalize a services agreement and C, to finalize complex tech purchases. And you can see here some of the generational differences are a little bit starker. Baby boomers have a tendency with some of that complexity or some of that sense of immediacy of getting information, wanting to turn towards a human versus other digital means. Now we do, this is telling us that we do, our, do live in a world where live humans are no longer really the primary imperative for more of that traditional sales processes to get things done. So we just saw where the highest preference is to use humans is to get answers quickly and finalize some of those more complex services agreements or purchases and to solve some of those complex technical and business issues. But the mid-tier, it's really still on the low side, but the mid-tier where you have uh, baby boomers who probably have a tendency to use humans a little bit more millennials in this space, but the collaboration, the sharing ideas, the building relationships, the renewing contracts for more standardized kind of services and products, and even to see a demo, B2B tech buyers are saying, yeah, I don't really actually need to have a human in that case. And then the lowest preference for incorporating human connection is for customer references, proof points, and even to purchase standard technology. These are all classically, historically have been done by a human. And now we're seeing that this trend is really the complex tra transactions, the complex issues um, are more for the humans to come in and they can start to augment these sales processes with digital means, e either virtual sales or even the self-service for some of the other lower complex transactional things that need to occur. So the preference for the digitized human connection, we are seeing 72% of B2B tech buyers are more frequently using things like chat or messaging service where there's a human behind it. It could be an automated AI based human or it could be a live human, but there's that sense that there's a human behind this technology. 72% are more likely to use chat and messaging service to get additional information on products or services. 69% will use it to actually get pricing. And 71% of millennial buyers are more frequently to use chat and messaging to contact a human salesperson or an agent. And then we were taking a look at the use of social networking and communities. 75% of millennials are actually using that to get more information about a vendor, about products, and about the service. So Gen X and millennials, have fully embraced this next era that we're in. There is a cautionary note though, that one size does not fit all. We have found in our research that more of your baby boomer buyers still have that preference to lean towards that human connection versus using particularly social kind of means. 22% of baby boomers have said, no, I'm not gonna use any social networks or community at all through my process, even though they had more dramatically shifted towards embracing digitized virtual sales methodologies and digitized self-service methodologies. So it's really important to make sure that you're driving down to that persona level to really craft and contextualize the right kind of engagement, the right time, right place, depending on the buyer. 
So critical guidance, knowing all this information, is there's three key imperatives to really establish virtual sales. First is to understand that our engagement with customers now is really orchestrated across a number of different channels. We have done a great job over the years of really establishing and optimizing individual channels, but those channels are now in silos. The customers clearly want multiple different ways to receive information and a mixology between digital and virtual sales, as well as a human being as well too. The second thing to take note is that the game has changed for how marketing and sales are working to together and collaborating. It's really a new team sport. We have played a game of football for several years where marketing would come on the field, they would do their things, they grab a lead, they plop it over to sales and sales would come onto the field and take it from there. And that is absolutely not the world we're in with virtual sales really rising to the top and more of that field sales role being specialized and coming in at a certain period of time. And that need for digital always, that's really where marketing comes in to really help to establish that foundation and that digital customer experience. So all teams are gonna be on the field at the same time, maneuvering through and delivering that orchestrated engagement and the right kind of engagement at the right time. And then lastly, it's really important that there's a foundation of strong connected data. No more human glued band-aids band and bubble gum. That is not going to enable success for really setting up shop to do digital self-service and your virtual sales. The data has to be connected from marketing and sales automation systems, drive that little level of intelligence about what your customer is doing, where are they at in their buying and decision-making process, what do they need so you can execute at the right channel and also drive automation in that process as well too. Thank you very much for your time today. And now I have the pleasure to have a discussion with James Salmon from Glory Global. Hi, James. It's great to be able to speak to you today. Uh, can we start off by you telling us a little bit more about Glory Global and your role at the company? Yeah, of course. Great to meet you, Laurie. Um, I'm James Salmon, and I'm the uh, customer experience business process owner at Glory. Um, in my remit, I'm responsible for the um, customer experience applications and the processes that our global sales and marketing teams uh, use to deliver great customer experiences for our business. Uh, we are a global company um, and we are increasingly diversifying into non-cash market streams. Um, the role I do encompasses um, a number of different areas from uh, deploying the CX applications to new markets, um, um, as well as driving continuous improvement to our existing processes and technology landscape um, to uh, improve those user experiences for our sales teams and to drive those improved customer experiences off the back of it. Well, it sounds like you're right in the middle and the thick of things with this digital transformation you're experiencing. But tell me a little bit more exactly where you're at um, and where do you see that you're going? I took on this role maybe 18 months ago and I... Um, quickly discovered that um, uh, whilst we delivered some you know, great best-in-class applications to our business, we had some real challenges, Laurie, with um, 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 adoption, user adoption, and, and making sure these um, you know, systems were talking to each other and that data was talking to each other. Um, and, and what I found was that I had to sit down and talk to everyone to understand where are the pain points, what are the things we need to change um, and come up with a roadmap to get to the point where our sales teams trusted the uh, technology, wanted to use the technology, and were able to do that in an efficient and, uh, 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 and a way that delivered as much automation as possible. That was the start of our journey. How are you also gauging that these new channels are meeting your customers' needs and paying off from that customer's experience side of the house? Oh, it's, it's a complete, uh, I have to say, Laurie, uh, that, that we are seeing um, a changing landscape in a number of ways. We're, we're an acquisitive company. We're bringing on new um, business streams. 
Um, and we're constantly trying to evaluate how that's meeting our customers' needs. Mm. You know, customer first and, and quality of products are really the hallmarks of our business. Um, and we're taking that um, into these other, other business streams so that we can make sure they're meeting our, our customers' needs because they're the priority. And it's, it's making sure that we're able to uh, continue to meet the customer, customer demand after we've sold um, um, our solutions to them uh, uh, so that we can then keep them on that retention life cycle um, of the service journey. And then hopefully down the line, you know, look at selling other, other solutions and services as well. But in the end, you're right. It's all about making sure we've got that customer connection, that sales to customer connection, and we need the technology to ensure that our reps um, are able to do their administration efficiently and effectively, but also that we're able to equip them with the knowledge and information that they need to sell. Um, you know, it goes both ways. The reps have got to do their job. But they also need the information so they can keep that customer happy. And we try and wrap around that digital experience for our, uh, for our sellers to enable them to um, meet our customers' needs. Really exciting times, but a very challenging experience where you know, customers don't care about your sales stages. They, they, they you know, in the end, they start off you know, as a lead, coming all the way through to a prospect and as a customer, but that journey, they don't recognize as a customer. They don't care about where they sit on our scale. They care about what we can bring to them. And, we've had to be more adaptive with our salespeople and help them to understand that, you know, it's not always a straight line and there's lots of um, going around in circles and going backwards at times before you can hopefully um, get these over the line, uh, get deals over the line. But what we have to put first is that customer and we have to support our sellers in that journey. Fantastic. The other thing that I heard you really call out too was the, the value of that connected data across your marketing and your sales automation platforms. It really sounds like it's upping the game and the level of intelligence that your sales folks have in order to be able to deliver that customer experience that your customers are expecting. Definitely. I, you know, um, I really passionately believe in a data-driven environment and we're really able to equip our um, sales managers and our, our sellers with great insights and information into um, um, prospects and customers um, and I've really tried to deliver a powerful business intelligence stack to complement the CRM and CPQ applications that we've got um, um, to ensure that our sellers are able to um, get, have all the knowledge they need about the customers before they pick up the call. They need that customer 360. And it's something that the, the Oracle stack has really enabled us to achieve um, um, and automate wherever we can. And so now that you've gone through some of these initial phases of, of your journey, what advice would you give others who are just at the, either the same stage that you are or just getting started with implementing virtual selling? Absolutely. I, you know, I think it's difficult to, to sit there and pretend you know what other businesses are going through. There are some common themes, of course. We've all been hit by the, the pandemic and had to adapt um, um, to that situation. You know, we as a business, we're used to going to physical exhibitions. We were used to um, um, going out to see our customers and we had to adapt um, to, to um, a digital environment. Um, hosting um, virtual um, customer events and we're now doing that on a regular basis and it's almost that the, um, the, the opportunity was there because we couldn't do the physical trade shows that mm -hmm. we had to invest in digital that we had to invest in um, reaching our customers and our prospects in a different way and I think you know the, re uh, the regions that we operate in we, we've done a great job of, um, of engaging with those customers remotely through these virtual exhibitions as well as trying to um, um, diversify our, our digital selling um, with um, um, ascertaining new prospects through our um, digital automation, um, which is we're able to connect with our CRM 
uh, with automated lead assignments. And um, through that process, I think we've, we've been able to um, really improve uh, just the volume of leads coming through, but also the quality of leads coming through. And so if any business wants to um, get more leads, better leads, uh, then of course, digital selling is, is really an opportunity to go after. And, um, and you don't have to see it as um, an obstacle against what you liked doing before, whether those were the physical trade shows and, uh, and face-to-face meeting, but it's something that can complement your existing strategies. And, um, and uh, using the platforms to communicate was as important to us as it was using our platforms to try and upsell or to try and um, acquire new prospects and new business. That is great. So we've talked about a lot uh, ongoing in your transformation. If you could sum up in one phrase how Glory has helped your sellers get back to selling, what would it be? I think I think what it, uh, what it is for me is equipping our sellers with the tools to minimize administration, yet enable them with the knowledge and information to prioritize their inbound leads maximize customer contact time and deliver great customer experiences to drive profitable and sustainable business growth. For me, it's all about um, um, ensuring our sellers can um, um, maximize the time with the customers because in the end, um, without those interactions, we won't be able to drive the pipeline. We won't be able to um, you know, win the business and um, and, uh, and deliver solutions to enable our customers to be successful as well. James, it's been such a pleasure to speak with you today. I can't thank you enough for sharing stories from the front line of your digital transformation. It sounds like you're on the right track and all the best to you. Thank you, Laurie. It continues to be a journey, but it's one that we're embracing, um, throws its um, um, challenges in front of us, but um, uh, challenges we're always trying to overcome. Good to speak to you, Laurie. Thank you so much, Lori and James. You are both so right. B2B tech buyers are undeniably digital first now and always. There is no going back. So how can our Oracle sales solutions enable your sales team to embrace virtual selling successfully? With so little room for error in engaging customers, sellers need intuitive and intelligent tools that guide them to better interactions and outcomes with customers. So now let's hear from Oracle's Michelle Bruzio, Director of Product Management. Michelle has an exciting demo of our next generation Oracle sales experience built with Redwood UX. Over to you, Michelle. Thanks, Katrina. Hopefully you were able to attend our Oracle Live event last month on September 20th, when our founder and CTO, Larry Ellison, shared some big news about how Oracle is engineering better lead and opportunity flows. At that event, you got to see Oracle's exciting Redwood user experience for marketing teams. And today I wanna to show you how we're leveraging Redwood for innovation in Oracle sales. Because like Lori from IDC said, B2B sellers have to work in an entirely different way now that everyone's doing business primarily through virtual channels. And that's in addition to a massive shift in what people want out of their business applications in general which is part of the inspiration behind Oracle's award-winning Redwood user experience. Redwood creates experiences that align with the best experiences users have with their favorite consumer companies. And while Redwood is beautiful, it's more than just a nice new UI. It's an entirely new design system that brings in context relevance, intelligence, and automation to every user to help them get their job done. So what I'm going to show you now is the next generation Oracle sales application for virtual sellers built with the Redwood UX. Let's have a look. So I'm going to play the role of Jane Ramos today. She's a sales rep at Supremo Power and she's spent the last year or so transitioning from spending time primarily on the road, meeting with her clients to engaging with them virtually since most of her targets are working from their home offices and so is she. So I'm working on an opportunity for a diesel generator expansion at Redline Hosting. On my opportunity page, I have all the important information about this deal front and center. And I can see that I have an upcoming activity pending, an appointment with Connor Adams that's happening today. 
Now, there are a few ways that I can proceed based on my own personal preferences for how I like to work in this application. Personally, I find the easiest way to get things done is to use this conversational sales assistant at the top of my screen. I can start typing what I want it to show me and I get a list of options for things that I can dive deeper into for this op opportunity or even actions that I can take directly from here. But in this case right now, I want to look at my activity stream so I can prepare. In the past, I might have had to go to my inbox, look at old calendar invites to pull together all the context um, going on around this conversation thread. But on my activities page, I can see a news feed view of everything going on for this opportunity, like calls and emails that have happened in the lead up to the opportunity being created and upcoming activities like the call that I have to make today to Connor Adams. And you know, for something that I've been working on for a while, this could get to be a lot of history. So I could also use my conversational assistant to filter down and view only what I want to see, like recent emails and phone calls. Now, since I know I have to make a call, I can look at all the history and notes right here on the screen that give me the context I need to prepare, but I can take it even further. We can embed coaching and insights right into this experience from partners like Gong, which is fueling this recommendation for what topics I should focus in on during my call with Connor and which topics I should talk less about based on analysis of calls across my sales organization to surface trends about what's working for our highest performers. So I'm ready to make my call. And again, I'm just going to simply use my conversational assistant to take that action. And you can see, I have a few options for how I wanna connect with Connor, like making an outbound call or setting up a Zoom call. Like James from Glory Global said earlier, businesses have had to start reaching prospects in a different way and having all of these digital channels accessible right from within the sales application makes my life much easier. So I make my call to Connor and this is powered by our telephony partner, Five9. I can capture notes during this call and Connor's telling me that his colleague Kim in the consulting division is also interested in hearing more about this product for her division. So that's great news for me. So I can wrap up that call. And now a follow-up task is automatically created for me. And this is one of the ways that NextGen Sales is helping me stay on top of my sales activity without having to do manual data entry. It's doing all of this for me. So with that all wrapped up, I'm going to act on this new information about the consulting division, which I can easily dig into by clicking the account name here to open the account details screen. Here I can access the account hierarchy to see how Redline is structured at a glance. And I can see Redline Consulting. So I'll click to check out this account. Now on the account page, I can immediately get some context about this account. Everything from open service requests to DataFox AI-driven market signals. And I can look at the contacts for this account and see that Kim is already in the system. So I don't need to add her. And she's even tagged as an executive. So I know she's the right level of contact for me to engage with to get this opportunity going. Automatically adding relevant contacts and analyzing job titles for useful insights, all of that can be coming from our ISV partnerships, like with revenue intelligence company, People AI. And as Lori talked about in her session earlier, where B2B sellers are no longer able to rely on having the benefit of reading the room or socializing information out of their targets in person, they're now relying more and more on intelligence and AI-driven recommendations to understand their customers and to know how to best engage with them through digital channels. And one of the best ways that we can make sure that those insights are getting in front of sellers at the right time is by working with our ISV partners like Gong and Five9 um, People AI and LinkedIn. So I had the opportunity to sit down with these partners and hear about how they're helping to meet the unique needs of today's B2B seller. Um, and I would love if you would check out those interviews on demand below. But now back to the demo, I've gotten up to speed on Redline Consulting. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a lead for Kim so that I can start working on next steps. The next gen sales application is guiding me through the creation of this lead and automatically filling in pertinent information so that I don't have to do this manually. So once I've saved this lead, I'll go work on some more of my leads. 
you know, my managers have set some performance goals for me around lead management. So it's a good time for me to make some progress on those. I'll click into my first lead here because our sales process prescribes sending an email as the first step when we're qualifying a new lead. So I'll use my assistant and do that right here in the system where again, I have access to all of my notes and context. And now that I'm finished with what I want to do with my lead at JK Steel, I don't need to go back and look at that list again. I can just click next and move directly to the next lead in my list. And here's another great example of how I can take action right from my conversational assistant. I can tell it to qualify this lead and boom, it's done. I can fly through my lead management activities for the day. And when I'm done with that, now I wanna go check out my performance dashboard and see how I'm doing towards my performance goals. The lead that I just converted and the email that I just sent are automatically tracked as part of these contests. So I'm very excited to see that I'm maintaining my lead as part of this team and that the lead that I created for Kim at Redline Consulting is automatically counting towards my leads created goal. So both my manager and I know that I'm keeping on track with my performance goals. Everything is automatically tracked and timestamped so I don't have to worry about any data entry. And my manager trusts that she's getting an accurate view of how the team is doing. So all of this, the, the conversational assistant, the automation, the data and insights infused throughout, it's, it's all part of our strategy to equip B2B sellers with all the tools that they need to work efficiently and intelligently in today's world of virtual selling. So next up, you'll hear from Sarah Eklund, who will talk to some of our customers about how they're getting their teams back to selling and making every customer interaction matter. Thank you so much, Michelle. So we have discussed about the trends. We have heard from a customer and we have even seen a demo. Now it's time to sit down with some more customers and hear how they are using Oracle Sales to drive better sales outcome and customer experience. Understanding your customers and really responding at their moment of need requires insight and a strategic approach to making every customer interaction matter. There are a few key topics to really, really focus on when leading revenue generating initiatives and increasing customer acquisition, expansion and retention in today's digital marketplace. Embracing the value of data is the first thing. Empowering customers, leadership and employees across the organization through really streamlined processes and automation is another. And ultimately, the third one is to provide more opportunities for sellers to really develop valuable and lasting customer relationships. We will go into all of these themes during this session and get insights from enterprise leaders and change makers that have tackled this new world of virtual selling head on and driven digital transformation throughout their businesses. We will be expanding on what Michelle talked about in her demo and really walk through on how you can leverage an accurate and complete view of your customer and really enrich this view also with third party data in order to connect your business really across all of the processes that are interfacing your customers as well as your employees. We will also discuss about how you as a business can engage the everywhere buyer by modernizing virtual selling touch points and utilize AI and automation to really enrich insight as well as also efficiency across all of the processes. We will also hear examples of how you can streamline and simplify your technology stack and thereby drive intelligence and efficiency across all of the sales, commerce and revenue generating touch points. Simplifying your sales process requires two things, the right data and the right technology. And this powerful combination leads to both better sales efficiency, but also a much deeper focus on buyer's needs. And both of these are really important in order to drive success in today's digital and very, very much changing marketplace as well. Having the right data at the seller's fingertips allows them to dedicate more time actually selling and less time sifting through meeting notes and, and utilizing spreadsheets. Data is foundational for us here at Oracle, both to empower our organization and our sales to really, really have valuable dialogues with our clients and work with them on their journey to a really strong customer experience driven business. But it's also impor important in order to really see the value of how you can develop business today. Another company that understands the power of having the right data at the right time and is committed to helping sellers sell is Aon. 
and is a fantastic example of how a large-scale enterprise company can take the journey towards a really collaborative virtual sales model. Let's hear from Tiffany Sadek, CIO Growth Enablement, North America IT at Aon. Aon is a professional services company, but we specialize in commercial risk products, health, retirement, and reinsurance products. At Aon, we are trying to transform our sales organization by unifying them onto one instance of Oracle CX. So what we did is we took our 11,000 client-facing individuals off of six instances of Salesforce and we moved them onto one instance of Oracle CX. The transparency that we have provided to our client-facing individuals globally has provided them with the ability to collaborate, which we anticipated that. What we didn't anticipate was the enormous amount of collaboration that was going to happen and the cross-selling and penetration selling that resulted. And now what we're looking to do is to automate every portion of the sales process to the point that we can take away the mundane. And I heard a phrase the other day, automate the mundane. We are really trying to help our salespeople by doing some of that work for them in every way that we possibly can. And it's hard to keep your CRM tool updated with contact information. We can automate a good portion of that. That's exactly what we're trying to get to, is where we can take enough of the non-value added work, if you will, off of their plate and automate as much of that as we can so that they can focus on the value added work. Now, along with that though, we are also trying to digitize some of the work that is value added, but that they have to do, such as client discovery. So if there's, if there's one phrase I like to use all the time, this is what we're trying to do, the right information to the right people at the right time. Because at the end of the day, we want salespeople selling. We're constantly trying to figure out how do I automate their day and how do I bring their CRM functionality to them wherever they are. And so again, in that roadmap, we're also looking at digital assistant. How can they interact with the CRM tool through voice? How can they make updates like with the punch of a couple buttons and, and, and a few sentences instead of having to find a computer and log on and do all those things. I think what CRM tools can do is to simplify or anyone trying to implement a CRM tool and transform their sales force is to first simplify. They can focus on what a salesperson needs to sell. I do believe we're at a crossroads, however, in, in everyone's journey. And that is because we now have data and information that we've never had before, or we might have had it, but we couldn't tap into it as much as we can now. And we now have technology that can allow us to tap into the data, such as artificial intelligence, that can take some really interesting client and account information and can transform it into a really hot lead, which is what sales is after. So, I do believe we're at a point where we've got enough good data and we've got enough great technology that we can combine these two and really hand sales those hot leads on a silver platter, which is honestly what we should all be trying to do. Such an inspiring story from Aeon about empowering your sellers with the right technology to deliver the right data and the right experience across the whole buying journey. One topic that stands out in Tiffany's story is what she's saying about automating the mundane and thereby using automation as a strategic tool to give space for dialogue and customer value in all of the different touch points. Very, very inspiring. Another approach that businesses take to personalize customer experience across different digital channels is through e-commerce. The growth of digital commerce and self-service channels are nothing new. Um, we have seen a growing trend of B2B commerce even before the pandemic. But clearly, COVID-19 forced a catalytic shift in the way how business adopt digital channels and digital commerce and also embrace new ways of operating both as buyers as well as sellers. The shift has forced B2B companies to quickly adapt to these digital channels and also embrace changing expectations amongst their customer base. Customers want to engage 
through their channel of choice at any given time. But at the same time, the customers also wish to have in contact and connectivity to sellers, trusted advisors, whenever they need them, really embracing a hybrid model of virtual sales. To meet these new demands, enterprises need solid but also scalable platforms to help grow their business with intuitive self-service commerce capabilities that are underpinned by the same data that connects the whole business. One company that truly has championed a virtual sales model and driven a very successful digital transformation is Canon, the multinational optical, imaging and electronics manufacturer. As a long-standing ATD Commerce customer for their B2C site, they saw the opportunity of leveraging Oracle Commerce Cloud for their B2B site. I had the privilege of sitting down with Stephen Casey, Digital Sales and Marketing and Transformation Leader, and Vinod Tiku, Principal Digital Commerce from Canon EMEA, as they shared more about their journey and how they have empowered their sellers to sell more through digital channels and also thereby empowered their customers in this virtual sales model. Let's dive into the conversation. I'm so excited to meet Canon today and discuss more about their virtual sales transformation and also digital transformation of their company. Welcome Vinod Tiku and Stephen Casey. Vinod, would you like to tell us a bit more about Canon? What makes you unique in the market and also about your history as well as your mission and differentiators today? Sure. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, uh, about Canon. Uh, Canon, as you know, uh, it's a multinational corporation. It's been around since 1933. We are experts in optical technology. The world uh, generally knows Canon for its core product areas like print and cameras, but you'll be surprised. You know, there are so many other areas where Canon operates. You know, we are in automobile vehicles, we are in medical technology, we are in space exploration. Come to think of anywhere, wherever there is imaging technology, Canon is playing a part in, in, in some shape or form today. And what makes us unique in that sense, in Canon, we follow a philosophy called Kiyosai, which essentially means all people harmoniously living and working towards the future. This, this philosophy keeps us grounded. It ensures we do business in a responsible manner and are considerate to the society in which we operate. And, and from a Canon point of view, it also helps us in differentiating ourselves. You know, A, uh, we are involved in the breadth of technology from hardware to software. If you look at the patents, for example, we, we have continuously for last 35 years been in top five in terms of filing patents um, uh, when you compare to, you know, the rest of the industry. And then our exceptional quality is, is what keeps us well known throughout the world in terms of a technology brand. That's fantastic. So inspiring. So in the face of this really diverse company with its such important mission, how has the traditional sales model changed? What are the strategies that Canon are taking to really keep up with the changing role and changing model of B2B virtual sellers? Stephen, would you like to share some more of this strategy with us? Yeah, so and um, echo the sentiment of thank you for inviting us here. It's a really important supplier for us now. Um, especially in this area. One of the things that is accepted in sales and marketing is that B2B buyers acting a little bit like consumers want to complete more of the buy buying journey themselves. They don't always want the expert in hand, but equally, sometimes they do want the expert in hand. So they want our field sales to come in knowing our products and our services and to be able to answer questions about those at the right time. So what we have to try and achieve is we have to offer a digital self-serve to our customers alongside and probably before our teams get involved. Now that's not really new. Lead generation through to a close of a sale is now more scientific and probably more sophisticated, but it's not new, is it? Um, what we're doing then with the changing role into those uh, consumers, into those B2B consumers, is looking at the channels that we have, sharing knowledge through those channels and opening or offering to open a conversation. But you know, sometimes the customer will never want that. And they'll go straight and have a meaningful, efficient and productive sales interaction almost without any humans. And that's what we can achieve with our digital transformation. 
that's really exciting, really about focusing on the customers and giving them the choice to interact with you in the right way. How has the adoption of Oracle Commerce for your B2B digital channel improved or changed the operations and, and thereby also had an impact on your business? Uh, right at the end of the sales cycle, we have the actual purchase. Now, what OCC allows us to do at that end is work on that and make sure that we can reduce the effort and increase the confidence of our buyers. Um, the, the printer sitting in the corner of, if you're in the office, the office, but even uh, increasingly B2B printers in the home has actually had more thought into it, hopefully, than you might expect. And the degree of configuration and the options we offer are very diverse. And it can be difficult for our customers to understand that. With OCC, we can automate a lot of those decisions, but also make our customers expert by giving them the decisions that matter at a particular time, empowering those decisions. So a lot of the uh, choices they're making to choose that particular device, they can do without the expert, or as I say, get in touch with the expert quickly if they need to. But in addition to that, it's not just that, it's not that simplification alone. We have complex interactions that are important for B2B. And for me, this is what differentiated Oracle that are out of the box. So we can have approval flows, we can have complex pricing and products and other options to do with the printer. You know, we can appear in the customer's ERP, a little like a marketplace just for that customer without doing a great deal of extra development. We're not having to write code for that. We're configuring it and switching it on. And, and really, that was one of the reasons we drove towards Oracle and we chose you as a partner in this area. That's really, really, really exciting. And it's really good to hear how the processes, as well as the interaction with the customers, are being designed and, and augmented by this marrying of technology and strategy. You already touched upon the results that, that you are seeing, both in the context of the operations as well as also in the, in the customer interface. Stephen, would you like to elaborate more about the results that you're seeing with the digital commerce and, and how, you, how you are using that also for the future? Uh, so what we've been able to do, as I said, is to massively simplify the ordering process. And what we've done is we've done that for our largest customers. So in our business, we have a group of customers called framework customers. We've agreed a certain set of products, a certain set of pricing, and a certain set of configurations that meet their needs, usually as a response to tender. And that can be quite complex to understand. With Oracle and with our e-ordering platform, you can come straight to it with very little knowledge and self-serve a full purchase. And that hides something. It hides the complex back office interaction that has to happen. So when that printer is ordered, it is in many boxes, it's assembled by an engineer, it's reboxed, sent to the customer site, an engineer comes and installs it, makes sure it is right for that customer, and we support it then later. In short, although we don't go into the detail of it, it allows us to make our customers the expert. So they don't need to know what a buffer pass is. In fact, probably nobody in this room knows what a buffer pass is, but the printer will have one if it needs it. And they don't need to know before they start their journey that the image press C170, something very much like an office printer, if it's suitable because that office happens to print training booklets is the right choice for them because it's got that extra functionality. They get guided through that journey at the moment that they need to be. They come with particular needs, but we're hoping they leave with the confidence that what they've chosen is the right device for them. Thank you, Stephen. You already mentioned earlier how the commerce is being exposed throughout the different interactions with the customers and thereby really empowering the customer to self-serve and being able to fulfill their purchase needs at, at any, any time in the buying journey. How are your current digital channels meeting the needs of B2B customers and how are you looking to evolve this going forward? You're right. Um, our e-ordering platform through OCC is the culmination of the buying journey when it ends in the sale, and it's not the end of the buying journey, it's not the end of the customer relationship, that just does form part of a wider and growing digital landscape. So taking a step back, we use our CRM platform, not just to know about the customer, but actually to govern the authentication and access control. So when a customer comes to us, they have a single view of Canon. We use also sales enablement 
and marketing enablement platform for our partners, the partner portal. And that allows a synergy between Canon so that we're talking about the same things. We're giving the same message about our devices and hitting more customers with more services and more value add. We have saved sales enablement, a simple area, actually I view as a marketing channel where instead of a digital channel, we've got people who are going to deliver the message, but we deliver the message digitally to them so that they can, in the best way possible, answer customer questions and get clear answers and clear message through to the customer. And then right at the start for many journeys, just from everything about finding out about our brand to finding out very specific product details, we have self-serve through the web and other marketing communications channels. So digital transformation, you know, it's never going to end. There's always going to be more to do, but we're in a fairly good position. We have a really good grounding here in Canon uh, of digital transformation. We know our customers are getting the answers. We, we want to improve that, obviously, but even if they don't want to speak to a human, we have confidence the message will be there and the information they need will be there at every step. Thank you, Stephen. That's really inspiring to hear. The digital transformation is really holistically viewed at Canon, and it's really great to hear how the brand is at center, both when you're designing front office processes, as well as also connecting to the back office and enriching the business operations. Speaking more about the business operations and the processes, we know I would like to hear more from you about the value of connecting the front office commerce application with your back office e-business suite, ERP. Absolutely. Uh, you know, with, with OCC, Oracle Commerce Cloud, what we have now is like a brand new shiny tool, which our merchandisers uh, are so happy with. It gives them much slicker operations, their time to publish has reduced fantastically. It's, it gives a very good customer experience to our end customers, but that all of that is also just one part of the puzzle. Uh, the other part of the puzzle is then making the whole end-to-end -end operations uh, much more smoother. And that's where integrations come into the picture. And by integrating Oracle Commerce Cloud to our ERP, what it does is it gives us this seamless flow of order information going from our front-end systems to our back-end systems. It helps improve our SLAs with our finance accounting teams for them to get all of their processing done. Our ERP is also connected to our supply chain. So that helps us in processing our, our orders much faster, meeting our SLAs with our customers. And then in the end, with all of this automation, it, it reduces uh, the manual intervention from a business operations point of view, which at the end of it is a saving for the, for the company because we have to invest less in people doing these jobs where automations are taking over. That's really exciting. Digital automation as well as alignment of strategy and operations at its best. So looking ahead then, what's next for Canon to look at when you adopt additional strategies and solutions to further streamline your sales process and, and really refine your, your strategy, we know. Sure, uh, from, a, from a digital point of view, uh, you know, OCC has been a great sort of uh, addition to our overall portfolio. What we are looking at uh, longer term over the next two to three years is bringing commerce mainstream to all our digital propositions and specifically from a B2B point of view, have a more connected ecosystem. So for now, as Stephen mentioned earlier, we now have a framework journey integrated from a commerce point of view. We want to bring our consumables journey for, for, for example, for paper, ink and toners onto the platform as well. We want to connect to our subscription management solution. We want to connect to our CPQ going forward. We want to make sure that commerce can also integrate with other touch points, whether in marketing or lead generation and stuff like that. So there's a lot of work we need to do over the next two, three years, but we want to use commerce as a key driver for, for all our essentially selling journeys, both B2B as well as B2C. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to discuss with you today and hear more about Canon's exciting journey. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, Vinod. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. As Canon's story highlights, customers want a brand that they can trust to deliver the right products and the right service when and where they decide to make that purchase. Therefore, businesses must now maintain a strong brand reputation and customer relationship to drive this positive customer experience and thereby also driving recurring revenue. 
This is a key theme in all the examples we have heard today. And the value of providing the strong brand experience and tailoring this interaction to be relevant and personalized across your sales organization and beyond. Customers expect one cohesive experience with tailored content that matches their purchase history, but also their current needs. By having a complete and unified view of your customers and their business, you can optimize a subscription business model and use churn probability predictors to improve the retention rates. Oracle subscription management can unlock new revenue opportunities and extend the customer lifetime value far beyond the single purchase. At Oracle, we are on a mission to maximize sales organizations' productivity, which directly maximizes revenue. And today we have discussed how Oracle sales can help sellers sell more with a unified approach through business solutions. How data-centric solutions from start to finish with AI automation and an intuitive UI can enable you to sell faster and with more accuracy. And how you can extend your sales models to reach digital buyers from digital commerce to recurring revenue with subscription management. Thank you for being with us today. Back to you, Katrina. Thank you, Sarah. And thanks to Lori from IDC and all our wonderful customers for sharing their stories with us today. I really hope you enjoyed this session. It's clear from the research and our leading customers that virtual selling is here to stay. That is why in the next generation of Oracle sales automation, we are looking at how we can make CRM a system sellers want to use to support the end-to-end -end sales journey. I'm really excited about the new Redwood UX design paradigm we are using to deliver prescriptive, data-driven journeys to sellers that help them close deals faster and better. And for more insights into the future of CRM, make sure you revisit our Oracle Live page for last month's chat between Rob Tarkoff and Larry Ellison. We at Oracle are working so hard to deliver better engineered experiences for all our customer experience professionals. As for Oracle sales, this is just the beginning. Check out even more extended on-demand episodes and stories below. And stay tuned for more exciting innovations and updates from Oracle coming soon. Thank you very much.